Joining us now is Governor Asia Hutchison, the former governor of Arkansas. Thanks for being here. We appreciate it. You made a name for yourself on the debate stage with many Republican voters who were just starting to pay attention to your campaign. The question now is looking down the horizon politically is will you make that next debate stage, Governor, in your view, that's going to be held at the Reagan Library in California in late September? Uh, the answer is yes, we're going to make that. Uh, we surprised everybody because we were on the last debate stage. Uh, we were one of eight that made that and qualified for it. So we're going to continue that momentum into the next debate. And people have consistently underestimated our campaign. But each time, uh, the voters, the supporters, they say, we want Asa on the debate stage. We want to hear his message. And so we're delighted with uh, the momentum that we have. We're going to carry that forward. Why do you think you are underestimated? Is it because you're from Arkansas? Is it because of the poll numbers? Is it because you have a more low-key personality than the front runner? What is it? Well, it could be all of the above, but uh, people are just getting to know me in a national sense. My record in Arkansas, eight years as governor, uh, my record as head of border security, uh, but also head of the DEA. And so an extraordinary uh, experience level that addresses the needs that we have in America today from the fentanyl crisis to the border national security and balancing a budget. And so as they get to know me, uh, they see that uh, I bring something that no one else brings to the stage. And so I'm pleased with that and where we are. Uh, whenever you look at our national security issues, whenever you look at our law enforcement challenges, that's what I bring. And uh, people are not going to continue to underestimate me. They're going to see where I'm ready to be president. Listening to you on stage and listening to you on the campaign trail, it's clear you are articulating a version of Ronald Reagan's view of how Republican politics should play out, a more traditional conservatism. But that's counter to what's happened under former President Trump, the rise of nationalism in the ranks of the GOP. How do you see that tension right now in your party? Well, it exists and you have to acknowledge it. And, and I'm guilty. I am a uh, Reagan Republican in the sense that I believe in individual responsibility, a limited role of government, an opportunity for everyone. And I believe that America has a leadership role in the world. And so uh, that's uh, Reagan's uh, philosophy. And uh, I was schooled under that. I believe in it. And I think it's important. Now, you have to apply that to the future. This race is about the future and how we're going to get back to a balanced budget, how we're going to get our economy moving again. And uh, these are issues that you apply principle to that work. And people trust uh, leadership from the Republican side on the economy. And so uh, I think whenever people see uh, that uh, fight for our future of our party, they're going to say, we don't want to turn the Republican Party back to where a party of isolationism or, or a party that ignores the opportunities that are needed for all Americans. When you were on that debate stage, you were asked about whether you could support the nominee of the party, if it's former President Trump, let's say, should that nominee be convicted of a crime. You did not raise your hand. Others on stage did raise their hand. What does that reveal about them? Well, it might reflect a fear of Donald Trump and that you think uh, they're he scared has, of Trump? Well, he has such control out there. And to me, you've got to stand up. And whenever you look at the fact that Donald Trump is leading in the Republican primary, you don't back off. Uh, you go at him. Uh, you make sure that you showcase an alternative way for leadership in our country and our party. And that's what I did. And to me, it's a no brainer if you're asking the question as to whether you're going to support a convicted felon uh, as the nominee of the party. And I can't do that. And I don't believe that's required either under under our rules. But you've got to put the country above anything else. What would you do if the Republicans stood behind a convicted felon as their nominee? What would you do personally? Would you vote for a, a write in candidate? Would you go with an independent candidate potentially? What would you do? Well, I'm not going to support uh, uh, Joe Biden. I'm not going to support the Democrats. I've always supported the Republican nominee, and I expect to do that again. Uh, th what we showcase in the debate is that there's eight candidates out there that can lead our country. I showcase that I can lead the country, and I'm ready to be president. And so I'm confident we're going to have a nominee other than Donald Trump 
and uh, we're going to work hard to make sure that happens. So I don't think we're going to have to address that question, but whenever you're asked, I've got to give honest answers and, and no, we've got to go a different direction. You've heard it out there among some lawyers, some secretaries of state across the country wondering constitutionally, is Trump allowed to be on the ballot due to what happened on January 6th? What's your view as a lawyer and as a candidate of this question? I think the 14th Amendment that pro prohibits someone that is guilty of insurrection, uh, of holding federal public office again, is applicable to these circumstances. And so it's another cloud that hangs over Donald Trump. It could put us in a position, if he's the nominee of our party, then he's held ineligible by the Supreme Court uh, or by lower courts, then uh, this is a gift to the Democrats. It's a gift to Joe Biden. And that's why they would love to see uh, him the nominee and all of a sudden be disqualified. These are real legitimate concerns, both in terms of the indictments that are pending, but also the 14th Amendment questions surrounding his candidacy. that should be an alarm bell and say, and, well, we need somebody that will put the country above party and that we uh, need to go a different direction. Speaking of Trump, whenever he refers to you in social media posts or sometimes on the campaign trail, he doesn't use your actual name. He mangles your name seemingly on purpose, though <laughs> I haven't had a direct conversation with him about this. What do you make of him mispronouncing your first name and doing it repeatedly? Well, you know, one, it shows that uh, he's worried about my candidacy. Uh, but secondly, when you have a name such as Asa, it's mispronounced a lot. And so I, I'm used to that and I'm not offended by that, but he sticks with it in a demeaning way. And it's just, it's just Donald Trump. And uh, uh, I don't take it seriously. Uh, we need to move on beyond uh, the junior high pranks though, and realize this is a serious time for our country from foreign threats uh, to the economic challenges and uh, that's why I'm in this race. And I think people need to uh, move beyond, he needs to move beyond uh, simple uh, junior high pranks. There are also threats from the weather. And one of the governors in the race, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, dealing right now with the storms in Florida uh, and all of that, that entails in terms of the, the, the risk to the people in his state. You've been a, a longtime governor of Arkansas. How do you assess how DeSantis is handling this and how he stepped away from the campaign trail? Well, absolutely, he's done the right thing. I mean, he's uh, back in Florida where he should be as governor and he's managing it. Uh, and you have to contrast that to uh, President Biden who was slow on the uptake to deal with the uh, tragedy that happened in Hawaii. And so uh, that's why people look at governors because they know how to lead through crisis. Uh, I've had to respond to whether it's floods or tornadoes in Arkansas, and governors have to pay attention uh, whenever your state or the nation gets hit. On that debate stage uh, in Milwaukee, I was there, you were on stage, I was covering it, and I, I noticed watching it that it was you and Governor, former Governor Christie who were perhaps most sharp-edged when it came to critiquing former President Trump and his, the possibility of him being the nominee. If you were out in Iowa, or maybe New Hampshire or South Carolina, and a voter was choosing between Hutchison and Christie for that kind of candidate, for someone who's going to stand up to Trump, what makes you the better candidate, the best candidate for that type of voter? Uh, because I'm a nationwide candidate that can appeal across the board. Uh, whenever you look at the fact that uh, Chris Christie's not campaigning in Iowa, uh, I think the fact that I'm campaigning in both places and in South Carolina, showcases I'll be a national candidate that can uh, win in November, but also succeed against uh, Donald Trump. Uh, and I have a high regard for uh, Chris Christie. He's been honest, he's been straightforward. We're both federal prosecutors, but uh, I know how to balance a budget. Uh, I've done that in Arkansas for eight years. I know how to lower taxes. Uh, I know how to grow the private sector of the economy. And I think uh, those characteristics uh, distinguish me. Final thing here, Governor, you're on the campaign trail. You're clearly determined to stay in this race, to fight on, to build your own campaign and your message. But what do you say to those like Senator Mitt Romney of Utah and others in the party who have urged the field to narrow, to consolidate as soon as possible, to stop Trump? You're staying in the race. What do you say to those who say this, this field has to get smaller soon? 
Well, Mitt Romney uh, gave a date uh, right before Super Tuesday, but it was after uh, the first four states vote. And so that's a time frame that uh, at least makes sense in terms of let the voters uh, have the first cut at determining uh, who should move forward in the campaign. Uh, not, uh, not the pundits, uh, not the, all the questions or people on the outside. Let's the voters uh, decide this uh, at the first opportunity. And even uh, Chris Sununu, who's made the same point, he talks about, you know, in winter. And so w the candidates will continue to evaluate, but uh, anytime I'm making the debate stage, anytime I've got an important message and a vision for America, I'm staying in this to win. He's staying in. He's moving on. Former Governor Asa Hutchison of Arkansas, we appreciate you stopping by. America Decides. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be with you.